Book of Clarence is a comedy drama that reimagines the biblical story of Jesus and his disciples in a contemporary setting. The film is a bold and ambitious attempt to subvert the genre of religious epics mixing humor, action, satire, and drama. This movie brought up a lot of talk about religion, blasphemy, and even messaging that's in the film. Is this movie worth your time? Let's get into the standouts. The directing. James Samuel did a terrific job of telling the story of Clarence and incorporating poignant messages that speak to conflict and issues of today. He's even the movie's composer incorporating rappers like Jay-Z into the film's score. Samuel's vision is creative and original, showing his filmmaking in some impressive scenes, some of which are the gladiator scene, the chariot race, as well as the crucifixion. I believe Samuel has pulled the very best out of his cast and crew to tell this story. The messaging. I think the messaging was spot on. It talks a lot about occupation. You kind of see exactly how the Romans back in that day was occupying uh, Jerusalem and other you know, places, trying to hold the Jews or the Israelites in their place. It kind of mirrors what we see today with over-policing in certain neighborhoods and even some conflicts that we're currently seeing in the Middle East. It ties everything together over time, saying the same thing that was happening back then is the same thing that's happening now. And the one message I took from all of this, no matter how you feel about how someone slighted you or did you wrong, you still don't wanna see any injustice done against that person. You might have beef with your community, the people around you, but then when someone from the outside infringes their rules and, and abuses people of your community, you feel some type of way. You don't want to see that, even if he owes you money, a guy in a fight with that person. You still don't want to see injustice done, and I think that message was the clearest of this movie. I went into this movie trying to point out different things that might be blasphemous and anything else, uh, talking down about the Bible, God, or Jesus, and I didn't find anything. You'll be happy to know that there is no blasphemy in this movie. It's nothing that we haven't seen with movies like The Life of Brian, Ten Commandments, Monty Python, even the setting, you get a little bit of Ben-Hur in it. Cinematography. This movie was filmed in Italy, and the backdrop lent itself to such a timely piece. It looked exactly what you would think 33 AD would look like, with the dress, the robes, and even the housing in the landscape. Very well done, great location. And notably, Samuel's camera angles get you right up on the action. Performances. Some standout performances included Lakeith Stanfield. He did an amazing job playing two roles from the beginning. He embodied the character of Clarence every step of the way. Another casting standout was Omar Sky from Lupin. He does a great job as Barabbas and had multiple parts where he had standouts and even showed off some of his comedic timing. But there were two actors that I didn't expect to see. I cut, I knew one of them was in here. We're talking about James McAvoy and Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch had a smaller role, but not anything less impactful. Benedict's role played like a satire from the movies I mentioned before. It was good to see him. And James McAvoy playing Pontius Pilate gave a beautiful performance. Nothing less than what you would expect from that man. Tiana Taylor and RJ Seiler were my runners up. You can really see the growth in this film from all of their previous performances, and it was just great to see. The story was another standout. This movie is presented just like the Gospels, a perspective from an individual in the time of Jesus. This is a redemption story and seeing the relationships that Clarence has with people in the beginning and how it changes towards the end of the film was very moving and even brought a tear to my eye. Nicholas Pinnock, who played the character of Jesus, wasn't in the movie much. And it kind of makes sense. You're talking about a perspective of someone who wasn't a disciple, so he wasn't always around Jesus. He's literally a guy down the street, a drug dealer at that, who just sees these things happening around him while he's dealing with his own issues. But those issues actually bring him around as a, a 360 to make him believe and give some credence to what Jesus was doing and it kind of mirrors his life. In this movie's first and second act, you get a lot more comedy, a lot more fun, I would say, than you do in the third act. It's trying to close up the story. It's uh, but not anything as drastic as you would get in a Tyler Perry film, how it goes from zero to a hundred in under 10 seconds. No. And not strap your son in his car seat? Hmm? 
How about that? You are a low down, dirty bastard. Shut up. Uh, it's a gradual understanding of the situation that Clarence is in and what he has to do in order to get to the end. He he grows. You can see the growth in the character. A lot of people saying that the third act was slow. I think it needed to be in order to have the audience feel what Clarence was willing to do or give up, be a changed man. Let's get into the letdown. The only letdown that I actually have about this film is the character use. Some characters were used in name, a bit diverted from the biblical narrative. Barabbas, played by Omar Sky. Barabbas historically was traded for Jesus to be crucified. In this movie, it didn't actually seem like anything like that was going to happen to him. And we were right on the time of them hunting the messiahs and would have been good to kind of see them kind of have their little side stories. Not too much, but just little hints in there like, oh, he's about to do the thing that I read in the Bible. Before I give my rating, I just want to thank all my subscribers. Thank you so much for the, building this community with me. If you're new to this channel, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content and we can talk some movies. I give this film a 4.5 out of 5. I thoroughly enjoyed this. The cinematography, the directing by Samuels, soundtrack, the messaging within the film, I think it was a great attempt to shine light on issues that's happening today and how they would have been similar back then. And the fact that this movie mirrors other satire films, it did a good job. It, it brought it into the new age, if that makes sense. But some bad character uses, not fully embracing that character as they were historically, kind of made this a little disconnected. Guys, as always, I have more movies here and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.